Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying what you are hearing. Now, on to today's story. Online Journal, Day 1, Entering Exodus. It's 4.05. I'm all packed and waiting for the sunlight to leave. Three months of North Carolina with my wife seems like a tall task, but it's what has to happen. To be perfectly honest I don't know what I'm going to do for three months. I think I'll just spend the first day back in my room with my dog. I don't know what to tell my nieces, they're going to ask about my wife. Oh honey, Auntie Amy's not coming. She belongs to the streets now. I'm laughing, but that shit hurts in my soul. It took a lot not to read all those messages she sent. Delete, delete, delete. Right now it's all excuses and I don't think I believe the truth even if she said it. Like, she could say that I really like oranges and it'd make me question myself. Do I really like oranges? I thought I did, but if she's saying it then that might just be a goddamn lie. I really wish I could be more pissed at Mimi. I mean, yeah, her and Mimi even not grinding together or licking or sucking or anything like that, what they did was still cheating. Everyone says so. I feel like I'm a bit of a pig or a hypocrite because it doesn't bother me. I mean, I remember that night back in college where we all got pissy drunk and Mimi wanted to have a threesome as one of the greatest moments of my life. I'm pissed that it all happened behind my back and I was lied to, but the actual act doesn't bother me enough. Does that make me a shitty person? If it was Buff Doug I'd have been pissed. Everybody's pretty suspicious of Buff Doug, but I'm not. Mimi practically controls dudes, sexuality I think. I wasn't surprised that he wanted to break up with Mimi for camming. He was always a little, vanilla. I don't know much about his past other than he used to be Mormon, and his family tried to force him to marry someone. Dude's always been pretty honest and upfront about things, a little uptight, but he definitely thinks Mimi holds the damn moon in her hands, cause she saved him. I think maybe Buff Doug is the one with rose-colored shades on. Mimi's sweet and bookish, but I think there's a damn imp behind those glasses. Still I understand why she didn't just tell me. I've been in her position, not with cheating, but where I betrayed people who trusted me for someone else who trusted me. I'd have not been on the team, had no scholarship, been working in my uncle's diner if it wasn't for my college coach. That didn't stop me from lying to him, and helping my teammates hide drugs and things. I wasn't using, but I knew who it was and I was certainly aiding and abetting. At the time, I felt like I owed it to those guys I was with in the trenches, that you don't snitch on your friends. I only knew those guys for three years, Mimi's known Amy since they were little as duck, I guess nagging her to tell me the truth was the best way to ease her conscience. I wonder how much of my understanding is from my filthy man brain. Versus my guilt that some guys who didn't break the team rules got cut while I got a second chance. My friends got a second chance. I'm looking forward to seeing my dog again. If I do reconcile with this silly woman I'm bringing him back with me. There will be an empty field barren of the ducks I will give about her not wanting a dog shedding all over our house probably going to buy that Nissan GTR. I've got the money and we may not even be having kids so duck a college fund. Other Doug says I should go duck someone, but I'm not. I've read enough Reddit and watched enough TV to know that shit ain't gonna fix nothing and that's just setting myself for uppins to come. Nah, I'm gonna go and give this woman enough time and rope to hang herself with. Though it's unhealthy to feel like that, like I got to stay mad at her. Gotta remind myself what she did, why it was wrong, and why anything but nexting her ass is a charity. It's what I gotta do to keep from feeling hurt and sad. I wish my grand-gran was still here. 
she'd know what to do. I think I may be wrong for changing the locks and security on the house, but I worked hard for that house if I ain't getting to enjoy it because of her, she ain't getting to enjoy it. Clara told me she'd keep an eye out, but I don't really want her to. Me and Clara used to be good friends. I almost dated Clara, but she wasn't really into bigger guys. But we always been cool. I think she's more pissed because her ex cheated on her and she idolized Amy, seeing her duck up after seeing what Clara went through. I mean, I'm an asshole for being happy that Clara said all the mean and hateful shit I wanted to say, but I do feel bad cause they sisters. I don't wanna be what comes between them like that. Phil has been kind to me for the first time ever in life. I guess you gotta put your parenting into question if your daughter's parading her pussy to strangers online. Mill has been begging me to forgive her. It's sad to see that lady cry. She's such a sweet lady, but, I can't say nothing but I can't forgive right now. I ain't got it in me. I feel like people duck up cause they expect a second chance. They expect to be forgiven. Our entire society is built on forgiveness. But you know, the people in charge. The people up high, they not like that. The people who actually make it are the least forgiving pettiest people. Cause they know that maybe people aren't worth a second chance. Maybe it's not worth a second chance. Or maybe I'm angry and bitter. Maybe I feel like this woman just said that my love, my life, me wasn't worth it. That the validation of everyone else was more important. I mean... Damn. I get it. It's like living your life and your mom is the only person telling you you're handsome. I get it. You wonder if the person who's dating you is a fluke. Maybe they got low self-esteem. I was reeling from Alison's betrayal when we got together. But, that says a lot. She knew what the Alison thing did to me and she did this anyway. So, I dunno. But what I do know is I'm gonna write my journals, keep my head up and try to make it through. No drinking. No drugs. No sex with random women. Just. I dunno. Maybe play some video games with my little brother. I ain't gamed in like forever. I might just buy a switch and see what that's all about. Online journal day 2. Other people's problems. So, it's good to be home. No, not really. Not yet. I will say that today was definitely not a day where I had time to spend whining about my own issues. Home is a bit of a cluster duck. So, I guess we can talk about that since I don't want to talk about my thing. So, mom and dad are dating again. Each other, not other people. Which would be a good thing if it wasn't for the fact that they're apparently acting like horny teenagers. My brother says that they go to hotels and motels, and do things around the house. He refuses to stop by without calling first, which should be the norm, but apparently they almost traumatized him. My parents are fit as ever. Dad looks like someone chiseled him out of stone and mom's back on her latest health kick. There's no meat in the house aside from dog food, but I convinced them to get some. My sister's old room is now like some kind of spa room. Yeah, not touching anything anywhere. I look at my mom and dad and they are so happy. It's like they got it all figured out. They've always been a bit perfect together, but a lot less attentive to us than they were each other. It's not that we were unloved or not provided for. Me, my brother Sebastian, and my sister Danny just were not loved like they love each other. I mean, you can just tell. I kind of always wanted someone to love me like my mom loved my dad. They worked together and lived together forever, I loved my wife, but if I woke up, went to work, came home and it was just her all the time, I think that'd get old. My dog's good, though he's going blind in one eye. He jumped out the window on top of the garage and jumped down on my truck. 
He's huge and beautiful. A Malamute. I got to spend some time with him out in the forest and we walked the trail like we used to. Since it reminded me a lot of when I was kid, running around playing Power Rangers, I was a bit at ease. Things were pretty good. Upon my request, mom had a few rabbits in the brine. And dad was still on about the Packers loss and how someone needs to run Kevin King out of town. No one talked about my thing. And I was happy, until I realized that's because they were dealing Uncle Brad's thing. Uncle Brad is one of those excessively happy people. I don't know where he finds the energy or the positivity, life definitely didn't deal him the hand it dealt dad. Uncle Brad is short, balding, and reminds me of Benson. I don't know how old he is. But he is older than dad, who I know is 46. He's always worked very hard, but has never really done all that well for himself. I think he does like construction or something, but not like, a construction worker. He wears a suit and tie. You know I may just have to actually ask what the hell it is he does while I'm here. Anyway, today, Uncle Brad was not excessively happy, I didn't have to ask why. When Uncle Brad is sad, it's always because of those little brats he's raising. Paris and London, no not their real names, but close enough, are the most spoiled, entitled little blonde bitches on the planet. And I hate them so ducking much. It seems like they've made it their goal in life to torture my uncle cause he's not their dad. Their mom, Joyce, is the nicest, ducking lady. She's so sweet and loving, but her little hell spawns are just ducking awful. Now, I'm gonna talk about this because, well, it's not my thing and I feel better talking about other people's problems right now. I'm just kind of sick of thinking about my own. But I will start by saying I'm biased. Cause, before those little shits came around Uncle Brad used to shower me and my siblings with gifts, and time, and all of that. And he then turned around and tried to do all that for those girls and they resented him for it. Joyce's baby daddy was a piece of shit. I don't know everything, but I do know that he was on drugs and was a thief. Uncle Brad met him at an outreach program and gave him a job as part of some deal to teach convicts or whatever how to build homes. I was like 12 when this happened. Brad stole a business truck, thousands of dollars worth of tools like fixing and stuff and jet. So wasn't the best, dude. I met Joyce the same day Uncle Brad met Joyce. Dad had dropped us off at his office cause he was gonna take us down to Guinea and Six Flags. We got to leave summer day camp early for it, I was so excited. Joyce showed up looking for her baby daddy and she brought her little girls with her. They were like seven or eight, and they were mean little shits then. I remember they were making fun of Danny's hair while we all waited in the break room eating donuts and drinking orange juice. Now the rest of this I only know from me hustling around my parents, but the rotten trolls, sperm donor had taken their rent money and all of that and then fled to Texas. My mom thought with another woman, but no one could prove that. She always thought Uncle Brad was a bit of chump cause he started helping Joyce out. He had given her money that was supposed to go to her man, and then helped out a little more after that. Joyce kept going to Uncle Brad for help and he helped her get a job. He got her secretary work at this building near Mayfair, we were up there a few times, and they eventually started dating. I know this, cause Uncle Brad started dropping by less and less. He used to come around and play Madden with me and Bast, and take us out. But slowly he just started giving them all his attention. That was a lot I know, but this is my journal and no one else is really going to give a shit, or read it, so I'm gonna be as long-winded as I wanna be. But yeah, this is a lot to just prepare you for how much venom I have for these girls. Those girls hate Uncle Brad and make it their life mission to ducking make him sad. Now I'll admit, a lot of my animosity comes from my dad who felt like Uncle Brad should never have dated a woman with children. 
my jealousy over how his priority shifted to them, but also cause I got a younger cousin, their half-sister Brianna, who they were incredibly shitty to. So a lot of what I know comes from Brianna. Dad said Uncle Brad read books and shit and talked to people, really researched what it meant to be a stepdad. I feel like he shouldn't have, because all that book nonsense is what got him letting them take advantage of him like that. He does nice things for them. He moved them from the really bad part of town over to a nice new house. He never asked them to call him dad. He gave them everything they wanted. He was there when they needed him and gave them space when they didn't want to be bothered with him, but did they appreciate it? No. He bought that bitch Paris a damn charger for her 16th. She thanked her mother. London got a challenger the next year and did the same. Uncle Brad still drives that same green Oldsmobile Bravada he had when I was little. They like to tell him, that he ain't their dad and how they wish it was like it was before. They are so nasty to him and he just smiles and is patient. I got spankings and whippings when I was a kid. He doesn't even yell at those damn girls. And I'd have killed London when she let her sperm donor borrow that challenger and he totaled it. Hell he didn't even duck that guy up later just for them kids. Current craziness is apparently neither London or Paris have been actually going to classes. I mean even before the pandemic. They were just up at the Whitewater partying. When he sat them down to talk about it they just were venomous about it and finally, ducking finally, he snapped. Well, snap for Uncle Brad. Apparently he just said okay and decided he was going to stop supporting them. So for all of 2020, he's been focused on Brianna. He was paying for school, their phones, car insurance and some other stuff. Brianna says she ain't never been happier. Brianna says that he refused to help London pay for her apartment and now she is getting evicted and will have to move back home and Paris is pissed because he took all the money he had set aside for their weddings and shit and put it in a separate account. Joyce is pissed, but she is an enabler. She is always covering for them little bitches. He at our house cause he ain't trying to deal with them and I don't think he should. I think Brianna should get all his attention. He is her real daughter and I don't think she's gotten all the love she deserves cause he is so busy trying to appease those damn brats. Either way, the first day back was full of distractions. No one asked me about my thing and I got to be there for my uncle and my niece. Shit's cold as duck here, but at least we got to play Madden. I swear these games used to be better. Hopefully I will get to see my other siblings. But Bast has been absent since his harrowing experience and Danny's pretty flaky. I haven't seen her on my last two trips home. But I plan to be here a lot longer. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just happy to write something today that isn't sad or pathetic. Mother thinks I should talk to wayward wife, I strongly disagree. So, I didn't think I would have to think about this shit today. Yesterday was peachy. I just, just wrote a journal about how great it was no one has asked me about this shit. 30 minutes ago my mom knocked on my door and I think, sure, she was gonna ask me to shovel snow. It's early, it's Wisconsin, it's no biggie. Nope, she wants to talk to me while dad's asleep. Apparently Mill called my mom and told her everything and from what I'm hearing, it's everything, not the manicured version I told Mill, apparently either Clara or Amy told Mill the whole truth. Or Mill called Mimi. I dunno. The point is I didn't want my ducking parents to know all that. I'm pissed because my mom is accusing me of running from my problems and says I'm being childish for not at least talking to Amy. She starts making excuses and I'm like no. Not even. I don't know if what I know is all that happened, and what happened is more than enough to next this bitch. I'm here because I need time to make a decision and time to clear my head, I don't want to be judged about it. I came home for ducking support. 
She says she is supporting me, but she says that she thinks I'm not going to solve anything by hiding at home. I'm not ducking hiding, I'm taking the time to make an informed decision. She ducking sounded so nonchalant, like the shit wasn't a big deal. I'm like a K. No matter how I feel about it, Amy ducked Mimi. That's cheating. She let another man watch and film her. That's ducking cheating. She let some rando pay her to watch her diddle herself. That's ducking cheating. This is a huge deal and I'm trying to be as right-headed and diplomatic about it, but I'm also not gonna let you treat my calm like I don't have a right to be ducking outraged. No, those years of happiness and support don't mean shit to me right now. Not at all. If you make me make a decision or deal with this shit right now I'm going to burn the shit to the ground and dance in the ashes. So ducking leaves me alone. When I can talk to this bitch without wanting to call her every name in the goddamn book I will talk to her ass. Until then I'm not. Mom got mad at me for being dramatic. Dramatic? I'm sorry this is an adequate amount of ducking drama for this situation. I think I'm being mature about this. I wrote my pity post, I got my advice. I tried to be level-headed and give everyone involved not only the benefit of the doubt, but clear thought based on facts, logi and experience. My conclusion is that I need to take time away and do some solo therapy. I do not believe talking to my delusional wife will do anything but infuriate me. No, I do not care that she hasn't left the house in a few days. It's only been like four days. I don't care if she says she's sorry and all of that shit. Nothing she says right now means shit. Talking to her will not accomplish anything right now. Now I'm angry at my mother cause I don't know how to get her to understand. What can I say to get her to realize I don't want to deal with this right now? My mom and dad have had a perfect relationship. That shit ain't common, it's rare. People aren't like you all. I love them but they are weirdos. Now my mom is saying she wants to mediate and maybe that we should sit down with Mill and Phil on Zoom or something. How do I explain to this woman that this is not something I want? What do I do? I don't want her involved in this and I certainly mediating. I have half a mind to call up my Mill and cuss her ass out. I don't care that it's like 648 in VA, I'm ducking furious. What do I do? She thinks she understands, but she doesn't and the more people that know about it, the worse it's going to be. She says she doesn't want to say anything until I'm ready, but she ain't never kept a secret from dad. What do I do here? I'm not ready to have this conversation with them. Online Journal Day 2.5 Woosa? Nope. Not gonna let it get to me. Told mom if she says anything to anyone I'm gonna bounce. So, that's that, word is bond. So, I'm up now. Ducking up? So. Today's plan is I'm buying a switch. I'm gonna go buy a damn switch. I'm gonna go to e Sains and get me some Geng Boombai, wings, and egg rolls. My favorite Thai slash Laos place ever. And I'm gonna have Rocky Roccos for dinner. Imna eat like a fat girl today. Don't nobody say shit to me about it. I might even have a cousin's sub somewhere in there, it's been so long. I'm bigger than this. I'm not gonna let it get to me. I'm finally gonna play Breath of the Wild. I'm buying Hyrule Warriors and I'm gonna get that a Mario Kart thing if they got it. They ducking closed down like my favorite game shop over there by UWM. So, that sucks. I'm going to have to go to either Mayfair cause Bayshore is dead. I don't know what's really open with the corona. I lost my shit there for a moment. Lost my cool. It's cool, it happens. Got my wooso on. I got a plan, I'm with it. Keep writing it down, make your journals, don't break anything. Don't talk any of the people IRL. 
Don't lash out. I can't keep it bottled up, but I can't let it show in person. So, here, here I vent. Faceless strangers judging me. Somehow it's better cause I can just disengage whenever I want to. It's cool, I got this. Online Journal Day 3. A little too bold. So, today was better, but a little disappointing. E. Sainz was not open today and Checkers here doesn't have mushroom and Swiss burgers. I ended up getting a cousin's sub and then stopping by Jewel Osco and getting some mock chicken legs. Been years since I had them. I did cousins for late breakfast and mock chicken legs mashed potatoes from scratch, and peas for lunch, we grilled the rabbit with some stuffing and eggplant salad for dinner. Talked to my mom and a lot of people were wrong about her motives. Apparently my sister cheated on her ex-husband, and the first time my mom apparently was very emotional and all that. With me she just tried to be calm, which made her come off as not taking it seriously. I'd have loved to ask my sister Chuck why he stayed with Danny, but he is no longer with us? Her infidelity didn't end their marriage, he died of a brain aneurysm. I'm not sure if I wanna talk to my sister for advice. Danny has always been very pretty and Chuck wasn't the first guy she cheated on. I wonder if she stopped. Of course, she's with her new guy now and is never around. Called her, but she was pretty brief. She lives down in Kenosha and I've never done anything but drive through there. Most of my day was spent playing Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Mom didn't talk about my issue after I got back and my uncle was out plowing snow. My dad doesn't know, because he can't keep a secret and he'd have come right to me if he did. So I got to relax. Well a little. I got a little bold with the game. It's not at all like I remember Ocarina of Time. I bought DLC and stuff and went on to try Master Mode first as a friend of mine dared me to. Here are my first impressions. Weapons breaking is bullshit. Do they break that fast in normal mode? I'm too stubborn to go back and do normal now. Admit defeat, but holy shit this mode is cheap. When did Lynx become solid snake? Sneaking around is fun. But the damage I do doesn't kill them. I got a real sword from this floating platform thingy after the first mini dungeon, I hope they all ain't that short, and now I use my soldier sword to assassinate. I don't use it to fight cause I don't want it to break. There's a lot of miscellaneous things to pick up. Will I need all this stuff? Apples and shit. I refuse to look up a guide or anything. I'm old school. You don't consult the strategy guide till either you beat it or end game. I'm rocking a Nintendo Switch shirt and just got out of the bombs. Yeah, I've been up here trying to clear the Coblin camps for hours. Trial and error, trying to figure the best way to attack. The game is fun, though I probably should have played normal mode. The music on this game is ducking beautiful. I may download the soundtrack and put it in my sleep mix. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Have an awesome day or night. Wherever you are.